Hey gang! So this is going to be the first in a series of processing from raw fleece to finished yarn from rare breeds I acquired from the UK. So the first one we're going to work with is Zoe. They look like this. This is of course my fleece and fiber source book. I'm just heating some boiling water to add to my pot bring the temperature up for washing. So some facts about the Soe fleece. They come off three quarters to two pounds so they're a very small fleece. Staple length is one and a half to four inches usually in the two inch range. The fiber count listed as 29 to 36 microns but they actually range from 9 to 48. Uh, they do have some Kemp. Blocks tend to be indistinct, a little blocky, sometimes with very slightly pointed tips, sometimes distinctly double coated, sometimes more consistent in fiber quality. So let's have a look at what we have. Here is our 100 grams of fleece. just pull off a lock here. So here's one lock. It is fairly blocky, but the tips are a little more defined. It is probably about unstretched. Yeah, it'd fall in that two inch range. This is actually really soft. I'm surprised at how soft it is. Um, the tips, of course, are sun bleached. So let's just do a quick strength test on those. No, they're good. That didn't break off. That was actually just fiber that pulled out. So our ping test is good. And that's our kettle boiling. So we're going to use a gallon of water. I have um, 12 cups in there so far, so we need to add another four. I'm going to get boiling water for that. All right, there's our boiling water. Now, this is not a, a super lanolin -lee greasy fleece. There's not a, a lot of lanolin in it. There is lanolin, don't get me wrong, but it's not really, really heavy with it. So I think what we're going to do is... Uh, we're going to add a half a tablespoon of power scour. I'm going to have to get a new jug soon because I'm getting a lot. And it's getting dried out and pretty thick. So I'm going to dissolve that in the water because I lost my lid for it, of course. So mix that in. Oh, that unicorn power scour. I like the smell of it. Maybe I'm weird, I don't know. All right, so we're going to plop in our soe. Here, tip you down so you can see. There we go. Plop in our soe place. Ooh, yeah, warm. And you can see instantly the dirt and lanolin is starting to release. I'm going to cover that and we'll give that 15 minutes to sit. So set a timer. It's 10 to so five after two or so. We will dump that out. We'll give it a second wash and a quarter of a tablespoon of power scour and then a rinse. In the meantime, we're gonna read up a little more on our soy fleece here. So it comes in natural colors. Most frequent is medium to dark brown. The wool will take dye, but it's most often used in its natural colors. Now for my passport in my fleece and fiber source book, I did save one little lock that I will staple into the book. And I will also staple in a sample of yarn. So fiber preparation and spinning tips. 
Try spinning from the locks after gently opening them. Carding is also an option because of the fiber length. As we saw with a number of breeds rude fleeces, some of our Zoe samples had what appeared to be persistent skin flakes at their bases, which we thought was a result of a natural part of the growth cycle in these animals. I can talk English. These would not wash or pull out, and this wool process best despite its short staple length on mini combs. When spin spinning brings some experience and a creative approach to the soe. Because of its short fibers, you will probably need to spin fairly fine. So we know we're going to be doing a fairly fine spin. The yarn you get and its use depends on the mix of fibers. Traditionally, residents of St. Kilda, where the sheep is from, used the very finest wools for underwear. Other ranges of fiber were spun and woven into Tweedy yardage. It's best known for being the most primitive sheep currently in existence. Ooh. Naturally color and shedding wool with exceptional fineness and variability are in the breed. So this fleece roos, like sheds it on its own so you can roo the fleece off, which is really kind of cool. So I'm going to get this washed up and I will come back when it's washed and we'll see how it looks when it's clean. Back in a bit. All right, first wash is done. I just got the second bath ready. Two first observations. The fleece is super, super springy, very finely crimped, and it sheds water like crazy, like the water just disappears. This is like barely damp. Now we all know I love to spin my fleece between baths to get all that dirty, yucky stuff out and give the soap and water a better chance to penetrate. So we'll just push that down in there. I'm gonna cheat and use a spoon because it's hot. All right, so those were just my first observations so I thought I would share. I'm gonna let this soak for its second to go around and then we will rinse it and go from there. See you in a bit. All right, all we're in step. Here is our soe, all nice and clean. There is the tiniest bit of veggie matter in here, but not a whole lot. There was a lot of sand came out in the second wash. So I imagine there's probably sand embedded throughout here, but that's fine. That's part of working with sheep. So I've just got it in a little net here. I'm just going to tie this up and I'm going to put it to dry a bit. Um, I'm not going to wait for it to fully dry because I want to try some combing with it and using it a little bit damp will keep down on the static. We're going to try combing, we're going to try carding, and then we're going to spin it and see what we end up with. So I will put this to dry. This is how I do it when I only have a little bit. I don't bother pulling out my big sweater dryer. And then I'm going to clip on this end. And I'm going to clip on this end. These are just um, pants hangers. They're pinch pants hangers. there we go my little fleece sling for drying all right i'll be back when it's dry all right so our soe fleece is dry in our little net here's how it looks this is such a light fluffy fleece i'm really impressed with it so what we're going to do is we're going to try processing it several ways First thing we're going to do is we're going to comb it. So let me grab a little bunch here. Now you can see there is some little bits of debris in here, but nothing too serious. Nothing I wouldn't expect from a sheep. 
So I'm going to fluff it out a little bit and plop it on the combs. I have a temporary roommate. She's attempting to tiptoe through the house while I'm filming, but she's not doing a very good job of it. <laughs> I should just tell her that the cats make way more noise when they're running around, so not to worry about it. <laughs> it's my creaky floors. I love my creaky floors because no one can sneak into my house. Or sneak out. Or sneak out. <laughs> All right. So, that is probably enough to start with. So let's comb this. Now you can see there's debris already falling out onto the pillow. I'm just going to make a little pile of it so we can see how much is there in the end. It's very strange debris. It's not like veggie matter. It's more like sand. Now this is probably a little too short to comb easily, but we're going to do it anyways. Because, you know, it's me and this is what I do. Now this does have a ton of spring to it. The crimp is actually very fine. And I think it's going to fin up, spin up quite soft. So there's the little tufts. It looks like some of the bleach tips are breaking off, which is fine. We want those to break off so they don't make slubs in our yarn. I'm seeing a couple there, so just get them out. All right, so there we have a little bit of combed top. And since we started with the butts on this comb, if we diz it off, now the butts are going to be here. So I'm just going to pull it off in a strip. So just gently work those fibers, loosen them up on the back of the comb so they'll release easier. I'm just doing a little bit so that we can... Uh, test spin it and see how it works in a worsted prep. Just a few little, little slubby bits at the end, so we'll just pull them off. Now we're going to want to spin from the tips, so I'm going to put the butts on the inside and Tuck the tip here so I know where to start from. I just put out this little tuft here and start spinning. All right, so we have a little bit to do combed. And most of our debris does look like just fine sand. I'm not seeing much of veggie matter there, if any at all. So I'm going to assume they live in sandy pasture. Fluff that off there. All right, next we're going to try combing, carding, sorry. So I have my extra fine cotton cards here. Just cleaning them off. Get that little bit of stuff out of there. So I'll just grab a little tuft of fiber and I'm just going to plop it right on there.
Again, the debris that's falling out appears to be mostly like a sand substance or maybe it's small seeds of a veggie matter I'm not familiar with since this comes from the UK. So I have no idea what their native plants are. All right. So I've got that combed out nice and fluffy. I'm going to roll this into a roll egg. So there we have a roll egg, this beautiful soy fiber. And then our last sample we want to do is we're just going to flick open some locks and spin right from those. So here we have some locks. Now this could be tricky because it is pretty short and I'm probably going to catch my fingers like a hundred times, but that's pretty typical for me. So I'm not too worried about it. My tetanus is up to date. There we go. Flipped open. And it's nice that there's the color differential in here so I can tell which end is which. I am just pre -prepping, prepping a few locks so we can just go straight to spinning Ow! Got my finger that time. Told you I'd do it. I always do. We'll just do a couple more. Oh, here's a good one. There's a nice lock. You can see how blocky that is. And that seems to be how this release grows, which is generally a trait of a down breed but honestly this doesn't feel I want to say stiff or as coarse as a down breed does it's got more of a hand of like a I wouldn't say merino but Corydale maybe so it's it's interesting structure on it Ooh, this one has a lot of little bitties in there See if that is some um, Kemp, which apparently they're, is it Kemp? The little skin plates. Apparently they're known for that. So I'm going to work those out. And it is on the cut end, so that would be next to the skin. There we go. So now we have it nice and clean. So there's our little bundle of flicked locks. And I think I'm going to try one more way. And that's going to be just take it and just open up the locks. We'll just fluff it and spin it right from a cloud. So now we have several ways of trying our fiber. I'm going to spin them all onto a little test bobbin. We'll chain ply them and see how they look. So there we go. I just fluffed up a little cloud to spin from. I'm going to get the wheels set up. Ow! That was the combs that just bit me. I'm going to get the wheels set up and uh, we'll give this a go and see what looks best for our soy fiber, our critical breed. Back in a minute. <laughs> 